no one can deny that there's not a storm going on, that there is not chaos going on, that there is not confusion going on, waiting for the jet to go over. Seven o'clock, we're in a flight path today. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, uh, I live probably 15 miles from the airport, maybe. Maybe if not, yeah, somewhere there. Somewhere around there. So it's Orlando International Airport. They're zipping across us yep. overhead. Uh, no one can deny that we are in a season of, of storm. There's nothing new under the sun. There's been storms around. There's been stormy seasons. There's been chaos, I'm sure, during World War II or the Civil War or Vietnam War or any of these other times that our country was going through upheaval. And if not mm -hmm. our country, other countries. Yeah. But we need to know that in the midst of all of the chaos that's going on, that we can have an anchor. Mm -hmm. Now, an anchor to a ship, if properly anchored, the wind may blow and the storms may come, but the ship will stay where it's supposed to stay. If the anchor comes loose or there is no anchor cast down, then the ship is at the whim of the waves in the wind and the person who has the boat may come out to find out that their boat is gone or their boat is sunk mm -hmm. because of the storm. Well, why do we need an anchor for our soul? Because our souls <laughs> are under attack. Our, our way of life, our belief is being buffeted by tremendous waves and wind. Hebrews 6, at the very end, says this. This is the hope we have. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, in which enters the presence behind the veil. Behind us, it's, it's a place that we're going to, behind the veil. Jesus, our forerunner, has entered on our behalf. Our soul can be anchored to the presence of God, to, to be in a place where Amen. Jesus has prepared the way. We are living in a rapidly changing world. There's nothing new under the sun. It's the same, same stuff as before, but it changes. It goes through times when everything's mm -hmm. nice and good and, and then things get rough and eventually the, the, the people who, the tough get going, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. But we're living in a rapidly changing world and there's a fuel to that. And the fuel in our rapidly changing world is things like the news. The news is, is constantly out there. It, Randy told me yesterday morning before service, don't read the news. <laughs> because as someone who's a believer in the scriptures, watching the news or listening to the news can, can or reading the news uh, can, can agitate you. It can put yeah. you in a different mindset. There's also something that I call phone face disorder. <laughs> so often you're driving down the road or you're talking to pump people or you're at a restaurant and everybody's doing this. Watching their TikTok, watching their YouTube, watching their stuff and their faces and I'll walk by somebody say, hey, how you doing today? I won't get a single response. Mm -hmm. You have somebody driving slow in front of you and then when you get up next to them, you can see they're driving and they're texting. It's phone face disorder. Get your phone out of your face <laughs> because chances are what you're watching in that few, few minutes of seconds when you should be paying attention to your driving <laughs> is not worth it. It's this has now flooded your brain with constant media mm -hmm. everywhere you go. It's a phone face disorder. Often what we see in the digital world is a promotion of, of sin. There is an agenda from the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In the Garden of Eden, he took on the form mm -hmm. of a serpent. And today he takes on the form of digital media. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's accurate. You don't know what people are actually saying. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to be trying to promote one thing or another. 
Well, promotion of sin is being done, and it's nothing new under Hollywood. <laughs> it's been promoted for a long time. But there is something that is happening because of this promotion of sin, because of this, this constant barrage of the phone in our face, because the news is constantly spinning some kind of story with some kind of a plan or agenda. This, this is what's happening. It is radically changing our culture. Yes. It changes the way that we think. The way that we think about what's right and what's wrong. In the 80s, it was called desensitization. This desensitizing. Mm -hmm. And it is when you subject people to, to violence and profanity and ungodliness and things that morally we know are wrong but you constantly are putting it into their face pretty soon they can't differentiate between what's right and what's wrong and they begin to change the way that they think and if you change the way that somebody thinks then you can change the way that they live because there's no longer that check in their mind that's telling them what they should and shouldn't do the way we live is based on what we're thinking, <laughs> what we think is right or wrong. If you think it's wrong, you probably will be a little more hesitant to do it. If you think it's perfectly okay, then there's no balance, no check. Well, liberals' values, how can they be so different than what scripture says? Can you read that for me? Yep. This is Matthew twenty two twenty nine. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. How can people get so twisted in their, their beliefs and, and what they think is right and wrong? Because they don't know the scriptures anymore. They don't want to hear the scriptures anymore. They have been told that the Bible is wrong. The Bible is inaccurate. The Bible is not for today. They've been told that it's old fashioned. It's bigoted. It's hatred. And so they don't want to hear this, the scriptures. But I understand the scriptures to be life to me. It is guidance. It is God's word for me. In Luke 6.39, Jesus made this statement. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall, fall into the ditch? In a ditch. The blind leading the blind. Truly, you have to be blinded to say some of the things that I hear that are being said. When I hear people say, well, if somebody somebody decides that they want to be a woman when they're a biological man, well, then therefore they are, and you have to celebrate it. Well, no, that's not the case. It's not what the scripture says. If somebody says, well, it's it's okay to steal certain things it, it, under, under these circumstances, that's not okay. It's okay to terminate somebody's life if it's miserable. That's not okay. It's okay to take the life of an unborn child in its mother's womb if the mother doesn't want it. That's not okay. It's okay to promote sin. It's okay, you, you wanna show love to these people. It, it's not okay to promote sin. Yes, show love, but it's not okay. When you're doing that, when you're doing things that are wrong and you're transgressing God's word, and you're doing stuff that is in error, you are planting seeds. You are planting seeds of the wind. And I wanna say something real quick, because what's happening a lot in our society is, this is being translated to fit society. Mm -hmm. If what you're reading in another Bible goes too far away from how the King James would have said it, put your guards up because there's a lot of junk going out there that's saying that it's Bible. I mean, it's, it's been going on. I mean, you have it in New, Mormonism, New. you have it in Jehovah's Witnesses. Witnesses. They have books that they've made that have a little bit of Bible, <laughs> but it's still like a cup of tea with 1% arsenic. It'll yeah. kill you. You want the truth. The if, you, if you get the chance, read Hosea 1 through 7. Read Hosea 1 through 7. It talks about sowing seeds of the wind and the harvest that you reap, well, it's going to be a tornado. Don't, don't sow seeds to the wind. Read Jose 8 through 9. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And we'll see you next time. Bye.